Yo, Mark 9. They really don't think we can keep doing this. We want to talk about the personalities. Okay. I mean, the way you put it is, is great. Is uh, first because you have differentiated in colors, which, is, which makes it easy uh, for people to recognize. And uh, uh, it's like, you know, telling when we tell a story, when we teach somebody and use some examples, but you use colors, mm -hmm. it, it made it easy for me to understand the whole uh, differences between mm -hmm. uh, personalities. So let me start, like, um, why did you uh, make um, this series of book? What was your intention in the beginning? That is actually a good opening question. What was the original intention? Actually, I was lecturing on this tool, this color tool, disc, red, yellow, green, blue. And I used the colors basically before because it works. It is not the most sophisticated, most advanced tool. It isn't. And people keep reminding me of that. But people remember their colors. And if you remember what you have read and what you've heard, it's better than you read something even more complex, but, but you forget about it. And I have lectured and held workshops, and people were always kind of happy and, and excited about this kind of, of uh, knowledge, let's call it. So I said to myself uh, 10 years ago, maybe I should write a book and reach out to even more people. So I went to my then publisher because I was writing thrillers before. And I went to them and I, 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 I designed the cover myself. Uh, and I, I, I founded the title Surrounded by Idiots. And I told them, this is a super duper idea, you know, this is, you have to publish this. And they looked at me with horror in their eyes and they said, it's the silliest thing we ever heard. First, it's a, it's a stupid title. It's an ugly cover. Scrap the whole idea. Just forget about it. That was how it actually started, which tells you something. If people tell you not to do it, you have to do it, right? So I did. Oof. And 60 languages later, I think it's a pretty good idea. Of course, I mean, it, it went viral. <laughs> the name is, is amazing. It's very controversial, I can say, but it's very catchy. You think it's controversial? Because everybody understands that phrase. We've all been in those meetings when we think that everybody else is an idiot. It's the recognition thing, right? Everybody's yes. been there. Yes, but it's always we, when we uh, say uh, surrounded by idiots, we immediately take ourselves out from that. Oh, yes. I'm not the idiot. No, there's somebody else. The problem here is, of course, the challenge is we are all the idiot in someone's story. That is the case. Sometimes I'm the idiot, sometimes, well, not you, of course, you look not like an idiot at all, but, but it happens to people. You recognize yourself as being the one who didn't understand things or, or you just messed it up. And then you have to sort of fix it, of course, and they call you the idiot. It's a matter of, I don't know, human uh, connection. Sometimes you, we mess it up. It's just the way it is. <laughs> mm, yeah. When we start talking and before we start recording, we were uh, kind of breaking the ice between each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, how important is to break the ice and to kind of like recognize the personality of the person in front of you? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. If you want to make friends, if you want to connect, not just communicate and talk, but to actually connect which is actually not the same thing, I would say. <clears throat> I don't know if you have to break the ice, but you have to at least do something in order to get to know the other, one, the other person. And we talked and we looked into each other's eyes and we, we smiled and we made a couple of jokes. And we, we, okay, you have humor, I have humor. We can joke around a little bit. Now we know each other a little bit more. Uh, so now it's easier. We sort of crack the code in, I don't know, 30 seconds. Sometimes it takes longer, but if you just stand and say, okay, what should I do? And you just, you know, put this facade up. You're not going to go very far. Mm. You need to be a little bit generous and, and open about who you are, I think. You don't have to violate your personality. Don't do that. But if you sort of show yourself to people, it's easier for them to show themselves to you. And I think that's a good idea. You know, and don't be afraid. Just, you know, show who you are. Test people. And I sometimes crack a joke and it didn't work at all. And people look at me like, <laughs> is this guy serious? And I say, no, it was a joke. Uh -huh. It's not funny. Okay, now we can talk about that. How about jokes? You know, we have something to talk about. Yeah. 
I don't know. There are no blueprints for how you can make it work every single time, but you should never, you should always continue to try, I think, to reach out and, and, and you know, make a connection because people are people. Yes. And This happens all over the world. I travel the world. Mm. It's the same thing everywhere. People look at me and I look at them and we start to talk and you know, all of a sudden now we're sort of buddies. Isn't it great? Yes. Right? Do you think we're, uh, we wear masks a lot? Oh, yes, all the time, especially at work. You, ha you have a natural style, a natural behavior, natural way of acting, if it's extrovert or task-oriented or whatever it could be. And then you put on a mask when you go to your job. And the mask is, is called the adapted style. It means really the, the mask you put, you put on in order to do the best job that you think you should do. You try to be what you think people expect from you, not necessarily what's the best way to do it. So we, we also, also always put on a mask. You have one mask at job, you have one, one mask when you talk to your neighbors, mm -hmm. another one when you talk to your mother-in-law, perhaps. That's uh, Which <laughs> <it's> very important. <laughs> very much so. So we have different masks and, and we do that and sometimes we do it intentionally and sometimes it just happens. It's of course the best way to go is if you do not have to use too much of a mask, if you could be, in gen generally speaking, so much yourself as possible. It's not always possible, I understand that, I'm not stupid. But I, I usually try to avoid places and, and, and contexts where I can't be mostly me. Otherwise, I think I'm, I'm, I'm playing a charade. I think it's not actually, it's not really honest if I try to play. I, I can act like many different kind of characters because that's my job to do that. And I do that on stage sometimes. But I, if you don't, if you don't, if you can't see who I am, then I'm not being really honest with you. So I try to be Thomas as much as possible. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, do you think that we have raised the bar for our image using social media in a way that we are afraid to show the true uh, self? Mm, that's, that's, that's a good question. I think social media is, I think social media is like any, and any invention in, in the history of human humanity, you can use it for good and you can use it for bad. And unfortunately, social media emphasizes a lot of negative stuff within ourselves as, 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 as human beings. You know, it, like sour cream strives for the top of the, of the milk, the bad stuff comes up on top in, mm -hmm. on Instagram and TikTok and so on. And why is that? Because the human brain is why to look for dangers and risks. That's how we survived, you know, a couple of thousands years ago when we were living sort of, you know, just out in the wild in societies with 100, maybe 150 people. You know, these huge cities like we are in now, that's not our natural habitat. It isn't. So we were looking for risks and dangers. Now the world isn't dangerous in the same way. Mm -hmm. It's still dangerous out there. I understand that. But as we have a focus for negativity in our brains by biological reasons, but the risks and dangers look very, very different. So that's, that's why, why I would say social media emphasizes the algorithms makes the things that gets the most attention, it raise, rises to the top. And that's usually the negative stuff because people react on the negative stuff. There's a lot of research going on and, and I'm, I'm not the expert on neuroscience, but I've read so much reports that I know this is the truth. We don't need it for our survival. And sometimes it really goes sideways. Mm -hmm. You know, online uh, harassments and, and, and bullying and a lot of really, really nasty stuff. And that's sad. Yeah. And we that's can, really, really sad. Actually. We always hide also with the, behind these screens and with digital communication. Mm. Uh, it's, it hides the body language and it hides the, um, yes. the physical, you know, um, yeah. meeting, which you talked about a lot, how important it is mm. to mm. meet and, and talk rather than just sending an email. It's so, so much difference between this and that. Indeed, it, um, emails and text messages, they are useful, but they are also cold. Hmm. There's no, no, no warmth in it. There is no human connection. Are you coming tonight? Yes. Okay, that's it. Hello, what about, hi, thank you for reaching out. I don't know. Yes. That's more efficient. Well, maybe, but it's also cold, right? 
I, I think I think it's, 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 there's a huge risk in this. Uh, I I I don't know what the solution is. If I, if I knew that, I would be a very rich man. <laughs> mm. But I think we need to pay attention to each other. We need really to to you know look each other in the eyes and, and say, who, who are you? How pleasant it is to talk to you. Sit down and have a conversation. Have a chat. Tell me your story. You don't do that online. I mean, Instagram, Facebook, and all the other platforms, they are, they are sort of a natural, well, an, non, an unnatural place for narcissistic behavior traits, let's say. And what is that? That is me, me, me. That is, you know, constantly focusing on me and myself and only put out the most beautiful stuff about me to show you how fantastic I am. I would never show you, you know, crying children and, and, mm. and you know, snotty husbands. I will show you the beauty of my life to make you envious. And I will bully everybody who tries to take me down because narcissism is, is, is flowering out there. It, it's really, really sad. And uh, the algorithms are, unfortunately, they are, they are focusing on this. Attention, attention, regardless of what kind of attention it is. Just imagine the, the, the headline in the newspaper, nothing happened today, everybody's happy, the sun is shining. No one's going to buy that newspaper. You know, there's a catastrophe, a bomb went off. Ooh, what is this? It's just a variety of it. It's called social media. Maybe we should, we should change the name of social because it's not anymore really social. It's, it's, it's more about status and putting... You know who we uh, pretend to be. That too. That too. It's it's it's. Uh, I don't spend very much time myself. I mean, I'm old enough, so I remember the world before the internet even. I'm sort of a dinosaur that way. I told my kids who are grown ups now, don't get stuck in it. And they do. They don't use it very much. They're on TikTok because you know why wouldn't you? But they understand. They understand the risks. Also, we, we we talk about it quite a lot. I say, you know, this is not the real world. They say, we, we understand, but you know, they're young. How could they really know what I mean? So I show them, this is what it looks like, but this is the real society. These are real people. These, these are the real human beings. Talk to those people instead. You know, don't stare at your screen. Damn it, just put it away. Mm. Dinner table at home, if you bring up your phone, you're grounded. No phones around the dinner table, including me and my wife. If it drinks, oof, you know, that's you shoveling snow tonight. I'm the hardest punishment for a kid now is to switch off the Wi-Fi. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's like prison. Yeah. Mr. Thomas, uh, how much we should look for the different personalities in each person, meaning that we have to search for it, how important it is to know which color is each person as you define each color have a mm. different characteristic. <clears throat> Do we have to keep looking and is it something that's going to help us improve in life or in communication and in, in, uh, in the work environment? But generally speaking, you don't have to do anything. You can just let it be just the way it is. If everything is working smoothly for you, don't change anything. However, most people would say, I could do better. I could cope better with other people. I could sort of communicate and interact and connect with people in a better way. If you find that a possibility, then you should actually try to pay more attention to, to the others. And, and my description of, you know, reds, yellows, greens, and blues, again, those are just the basics. You can combine the colors in, in, I don't know, thousands of ways, obviously. But the more you pay attention to other people, then the more you sort of close your mouth and open your ears and your eyes, the more you can learn. If you're so much into your own head that you sort of forget about everybody else. I mean, I meet people weekly, I would say, that uses the world as their stage. They are sort of into themselves. and That's not very lovely in mm -hmm. the long run. You can do that for a while, but if you don't pay attention to others, you're going to mess it up again because you will always be dependent on other people. When I was a young man, I, I didn't understand how valuable it was to make these connections, to, to really interact and, you know, to... To, to help somebody then get something in return and give something beforehand and then maybe get something in return. It, it's all about collaboration and communication. All, all of this, you, you have to pay attention. It, it's, it's, it's just the way it is. If you don't do anything for other people ever, life will be very, very hard for you. That is just the way it is. Maybe it's unfair. Maybe you're a beautiful individual and you, you deserve better. But, but that's not how the world is, world is, is working. So... so 
No. Do the work, learn people, do use any system, but use some kind of system. Mm -hmm. Pay attention, be there, right? Yes. It can take you so far. I want to talk about the colors a little bit in case someone didn't read your book Possibly yet. Possibly anyone uh, still yes, missed it. Uh, quickly, exactly, I read the red. <laughs> he is... said humbly, <laughs> I'm sorry for everybody's dinner tables talking about colors all over the planet. Sorry about that. Yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about red. I want you to describe red in the in the the personality and mm -hmm. give it also an example of a character of an uh, animal. Of an animal? Yes. Ooh. Oh dear. Red. Oof, I don't know if I'm able to do that. Well, it, it's about dominance. Mm -hmm. It's about action, thought action all the time. Red people are usually, they are like my wife, they're a force of nature. They stand up and they just walk away and they just do it with no thinking. Sometimes sometimes it's excellent, sometimes it is perfect, sometimes they really, really, you know, causes problems for other, for other people, but they will never sit still. Result, you know, actions, very action-oriented, very result-focused, you need to achieve something. And they can step on people's toes a lot of times. What animal is that? I really don't know. A lion, maybe? Maybe it is a lion. A lion that is actually silent in the back, but still protecting the herd, right? Could be a lion. Let's call it a lion. Okay. Let's do that. That's okay. <laughs> Yellow, that is actually the smiley ones, the happy ones, the shiny ones, you know? Like we were playing in the beginning. Yes. You, you know that. We're There's trying. some yellow in you. Could possibly be, maybe. You can see it in your eyes. Yes, yes. That's, that's, that's the beautiful, you know, color because they are happy. They are positive, you know. The sun is up even though it's raining. Yeah, yeah, but the sun is always shining somewhere, you know. You have to stay positive. You have to see the beauty in life. Possibilities, you know, openings. I love people. Who are you? Let me tell you my story. Most sentences starts with me or I. Okay, is, so they love the themselves. Well, I don't know what they talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. They talk about themselves. Do they uh, avoid conflict? Uh, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. I would say. They will enter the conflict if, if you provoke them by actually telling them to shut up. That's the worst thing you can say. Just stop talking. Oh, such a bully. This is a really toxic conversation. He taught me to be quiet. What a kind of harassment is this? What kind of animal is this? Yes, let's find the animal. <laughs> it could be an insect, like butterfly or something. <laughs> I don't know which animals are talking the Hybrid. Most. I would say a dog. A do yeah, a dog <laughs> waving the tail, happy, positive energy, you know. Maybe forgetting about it. Yeah, maybe unhappy, a golden retriever. Oh, yes. Yay, whoa, yes, you know. That's my dog, actually. So, that's your dog, yeah. yeah I have she's, one so she's too. a yellow. <laughs> I have one too called Baba. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Such a lovely animal. He, he, he is really, really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but he's friendly and he's nice and he's kind but and he's remember, helpful. remember, we are surrounded by idiots. We are so indeed. Maybe one of them. <laughs> okay, blue. Know. Blue. Okay, the blues, those are, you know, the task-oriented introverts, which gives you an accountant, mm -hmm. uh, a surgeon, perhaps a neurosurgeon. Uh, lawyer. Tax, could be a lawyer, tax lawyer. Uh, focused, detail-oriented facts, facts, proof. How do you know? You know, you say, yeah, you know, I heard this, and you say, A, B, C, so where, where did you read it? I don't remember. Then it's not true. I have to see it with my own eyes, otherwise it's not true. Proof, proof, facts, details, details, details. You know, find how many lines are there in Excel, how many rows? Mm -hmm. 1,049,500. Because facts. I tested this. Oh, wow. Yes, Very you should do things. that too. You have to test it yourself, you know. That's the blue behavior, mm -hmm. you know. Stone-faced, lots of humor, but a kind of a dry sense of humor. Very, very, very smart, very, very clever usually, but very, very silent. They don't talk unless they have something to say. Mm -hmm. I know those people exist too. Even though you might ask, you, if you don't ask them, they won't tell you. Even though they know the answer to a complex question. If you don't address it to them, they might not say because you didn't ask. Yes, but you would like to hire them. Oh, they're really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very, very trustworthy, very, very loyal. Uh, indeed, working really hard, actually. Yeah, you said green. Oh, let's, uh, let's talk about the blue. Which, which animal? <laughs> which animal? I don't know. There's a German cover of my book. They, they made an owl when it comes to the blue. I do not know if that is correct. Maybe the owl is a symbol for, for intelligence. 
right? Mm. The owl, the bird. Maybe ants. Ants. Mm. Systematic or... Systematic, you know, working hard. Mm. Do they work with a group, uh, the blues? No, they are individuals. Individual actually. introverts. So not ants. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, All right. I'm Let's terrible at animals. Let's go to green. Green is, you said green are the most, uh, like, mm. they are the most. Most people are green. Most people have green in them. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is true. Friendly, caring, sharing, uh, uh, introvert, but people oriented. They like like people, but they don't want to be in the center of things. Very kind, very helpful. Could it, they would never go for a cup of coffee without talking. Oh, you need coffee? Oh, of course. And you? And you need coffee? Sure. You? Oh, you drink tea? I remember lemon tea. Was it? <laughs> oh no, we're out of lemon tea. I will go down to the store ten o'clock at night. I will offer you my evening to get you the course. You have the lemon tea. They are so helpful and, and very, because they, they want to be friends with everybody, which is, of course, impossible. They, they are very conflict avert. Okay. If you say, do you like this? They will say, yes, I love it. You have to go to body language. They won't tell you I hate it because they maybe conflict. you don't like me anymore. Mm. What's going to happen now? Oh, now we're in trouble. There's one thing they, they, they dislike even more than conflicts. That is actually changes. Okay, Who so they follow the pattern. It was better before. Well, I don't know if, we, if it was better before, but it's worse now, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of the green perspective here. Let's stay put here and see what happens. Don't change things because I've only done this for like 11 years. This works perfectly. Maybe it doesn't work at all, but I know what it is at least. That's the green perspective. Okay, so they don't work in the creative industry then? Uh, Creativity isn't about the colors. The colors is only about the behaviors. Creativity could also be, usually people suggest, is, is the yellow, are the yellow ones the most creative? Mm -hmm. I would say yes. Uh, but you can be creative as a blue or green person also. It could be about your drivers. You can have something called an aesthetic drive, which means that you are motivated by creativity, by, by creating things. It could be an artist, could be a musician or, or, or an author. I have that within myself. Uh, so it's it's a bit more complicated, but mm -hmm. but um, yeah. <laughs> and do you uh, do you think we can change or shift colors? Meaning that I can change my personality, work on it, and change it to shift to a different personality, or it's something that we are born with. Uh, we are born with our behaviors which comes from our personalities. The disc and the colors don't describe personalities. Uh, just to act in the blue way, just mm -hmm. so we get the definitions right. It's about behaviors and the personality, you can't see it. You try to figure it out. Mm. And the personality is, to make it easy, it's 50-50. It's, it's not really that actually simple, but let's say for the sake of argument, in your DNA, you inherited from your parents, but also from how you were raised in your first years in school and your friends as a teenager and your first job until the age of, of, of adulthood. Mm -hmm. But when is that? That's when you're actually your frontal lobe closes. It's actually a neurophysical thing. When your frontal lobe closes, now you can make decisions and understand the consequences of them. That's why it's so 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 uh, expensive for young men to insure their motorcycles because it happens at the age of 23, 24 with young men. 19, 20, 18, 19 with girls, actually, for some reason. Don't ask me. It's biology. Yeah. Blame somebody else than me. I'm just a messenger here. But after that, you don't do not change your personality. Now your personality is kind of fixed, so to speak, which means if you end up in one of the corners, this is who you're going to be. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can't change your behaviors. You, have, you could add things. You can work on your... Your, 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 your structure, you can work on how you orient yourself in the world, you can work on how to perform on stage if you're a keynote speaker, for instance. But you usually don't change who you are unless you go through some sort of uh, severe trauma of some mm -hmm. kind, near-death experiences or, 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 or real hard violence, or if you... Uh, get stressed out and you get PTSD or something that mm -hmm. could change you but usually you do not change your personality that is actually quite quite unusual quite seldom people do that 
Yeah, it's more on the behavior. So it's so you said to know more the behavior of the person. We have to determine to um, actually have a better uh, connection and con- conversation. But mm-hmm. on the flip side, it also helps to set boundaries between each other. And mm-hmm. uh, you mentioned that setting boundary early is something good. What do you mean about that? Uh, what's the context? Setting boundaries. Uh, you need to send boundary early, as early as possible. So when when you meet a person, let me ah. uh, let me re- let me ask ah. you the, the, ah. the same question in a different way. Um, do you think people uh, are wrong until they prove the opposite, or they are right until they, they prove the opposite? Mm-hmm. Now that that's <laughs> in, <laughs> that's good. That's good. When I was younger, I was also much more naive than I am today. And I miss that part of me a little bit. Because then I thought, well, innocent until proven something Mm -hmm. else. Which is a beautiful way to to look at it. I trust people in general. So people tricked me and fooled me and, 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 you know, completely blow me away because I I, I trusted them too much. It cost me friendships, it cost me money, it cost me a piece of my career and so on. And uh, But that was on me because I was too naive. The problem with life and the world and people in it is some people are trustworthy indeed and some people aren't. It's not very easy to find out who is who in this, this uh, scheme, in this strange game that we are playing here. I, need, I think you need to be a bit preventive. You, you have to actually be a little bit... Not on alert, cautious. but you have to be a bit cautious. Mm-hmm. Don't give people your life story in the first meeting. Like with dating, don't open up and tell them, you know, these are my fears and dangers in life and those are my weaknesses. If you meet a narcissist or a psychopath or a Machiavellian or something, they will use it and throw it back at you in the next meeting. Most people are not like that, but enough people are like that, so you have to pay attention. That's, that's what I mean with boundaries. Decide how much should you show of who you really are. Take it one step at a time. Don't show everything immediately. But it, it sounds also a little bit bitter and a little bit negative, and I understand that. I have a great respect for you. Say, yeah, but you know, we need to be open-minded. And you said in the beginning of this interview we should show yourself who you are. Yes, I showed you what I chose to show you. You don't know me yet. I showed you one piece of me, but there are many other pieces, right? And the same thing goes for you because you're smart enough to understand that. Sometimes it's easy to, you know, oh, he's so good. Oh, he's so friendly. He's so kind and open. He told me his secrets. I'm going to tell him my secrets. Well, how do you know he didn't lie? I mean, that's a downside. I've written about psychopathy and, and narcissism. And those people, they are manipulators. And the world is not... Well, I guess the world is an oyster, but it's still also sort of a complicated field. To, to navigate the world, is it, it's tricky. It is difficult. Uh, that is just the way it is. There's yes. no way around it. Don't be naive. It's true. It's, uh, it's the most uh, difficult thing to, be, to keep uh, being nice and actually to be uh, a strong... Uh, uh, em- emotionally intelligent and knowing to mm. understand what's what's uh, mm. between mm. the lines mm. and mm. it's something that sometimes unfortunately due to in the family like a person maybe he, he was not born with his father to teach him this toughness a little bit so mm. he's nice and kind because of the mother and <laughs> and maybe okay that could I, be the case I it guess. could be the case um yes. and uh, life uh, teaches you to be tougher and tougher mm-hmm. um it's where do we try uh, draw the limit i mean in business maybe we need to be uh, in that way you know like uh, not showing emotions how how much uh is that something um important to hide and or to show more of it that Human beings are, there are different schools in this. I I don't claim to be an expert, but human beings, are we good creatures? Are we good by nature and then we learn how to be evil? 
or is it actually the other way around? Are we born evil and with good parenting, we can learn how to behave and how to act? Just look at the boys, you know, throwing things at each other's head and so on. Boys are quite aggressive. Girls can for sure be aggressive, but boys are more aggressive. Don't kill the messenger. I don't know why our creator made us that way. That's just the way it is. And there are so many psychological studies that actually proves this. So, but, but we have to take, take it. We can't go around and beat each other up. So we have to train, well, let's say the boys in this case, just for the sake of argument. Just, we have to train the, the, the boys to not do that, to be friendly and kind and open-minded and shake hands, you know, and you know, be, 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 be nice and polite. If we didn't train them that, to, to that, what would happen? Would we still be savages out in the jungle? Mm. What do you think? I don't know the answer to that question. I believe that is closer to the real truth. I can't prove it, but I'm sensing we are actually trying to cultivate ourselves into a corner which isn't our natural behavior. I mean, just look at where we are. The natural habitat isn't million citizen city. It isn't. It's out there on the savanna somewhere with 150 people. That's where we come from. Homo sapiens are created in that environment, mm -hmm. in that context. Biologically speaking, we are the same. But the world has changed. We have changed the world. It's, it's really, really complicated. Um, what was the question again? The question is more, <laughs> <laughs> it's more also because I want to bring it back to the father and the mother and maybe it's, it, whether it's a masculine trait uh, or a feminine trait and that's the balance between them as, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, like maybe more narcissists or more fighters or more people who are, they tend to be more on the male side and, and maybe the softness we get it from the female side. Yes. And you know this is controversial in some parts of the world. <laughs> but you, you mentioned know. four of uh, four of four of um, every four narcissists is a female compared to one female. Yes, that is. Uh, I, I don't know. Why. I mean, on, on, on the if you look at the scale, if you look at the, the 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 how this is divided, the most aggressive people on the planet are all male. That is, it's just the way it is. I don't know why that is, but it's an overlap of 6 to 40. A lot of women are aggressive. Their aggression just looks different. So it's a huge overlap. But if you look at the distribution, most men are, are most aggressive. And on the other side, most f women are not aggressive. I think we should be happy for that. <laughs> I think it's a good way. Do fathers raise kids differently than mothers? I would say, yes. Is that good or bad? Well, who knows? Depends on what comes out. You know the answer 15 years later. I mean, the incubation period is quite long. If your kids grow up and they, they become, you know, uh, responsible citizens, then you did good. Right? Yes. You did good. Hmm. Congratulations. Uh, but who knows, really, because parents only influence their kids until a certain age. After the age of four, four, their bodies at kindergarten and, and in school have a greater impact on the kids than the parents have after the age of four. That is very, very early. When they're nine, it's basically too late to completely change everything. Mm. That's scary news for yes. a lot of people. Yes, it is. And when they're in the teens, forget about it. You can make them be quiet, but you can't change them anymore, actually. Hopefully you did good in the beginning. I'm sure you did. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> you wrote, a, you, you keep writing and that's amazing. You wrote uh, surrounded by idiots, by narcissists, by bad uh, bosses, setbacks, vampires, psychopath. Mm -hmm. You need to write a movie, I guess. We'll see. Is, is this There's something? Uh, another, another book that I was actually just editing right now. It will come out in October. It's going to be called... Can I say it here? Yes, of course. A lot of months till October, but it's going to be called Surrounded by Liars. Most people say, oh, oh. All of a sudden it's true because everybody lies. Everybody lies. That's the downside. Everybody, including you and I, we lie. Hopefully for the good, because we don't want to offend each other, but mm -hmm. everybody lies. It's just the way it is. Is it a defensive mechanism? Could be. There's a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons for it. Uh, we would like to fit in. Oh, what, what about uh, 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 
I only have sparkling water. Oh, that's fine. I love sparkling water. Maybe I hate it. But tell you, what is it? Sparkling water. I need real water, you know? Take the bubbles out. You can't do that. So I, I'm polite. I say, no, I love it. What is this? I'm going to test what it is. It's a normal water. Good, because I like that better. You like it? Or maybe I you don't. Prefer, exactly. That's how, my how, how can you tell, really? But this is, we need to lie sometimes. Do we? Hmm. But how much is the question? So why do you think we need to lie? I think um, to avoid uh, conflict. And uh, uh, also, we, I might say, oh, I love your tie. It's beautiful. It's just a compliment. <laughs> Maybe I don't like it. Maybe you hate red. <laughs> I don't know. You know, what's interesting, the great philosophers like Socrates and Plato and all of these people, uh, you know, Hadrian, they have talked about the truth and the truth shall, 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 shall set you free and all of these things and contemplating about the truth and honesty and everything. I, am, I have worked with many, many, many organizations when we talk about fundamental values. We introduced that as a management consultant in the late 90s. We need fundamental value. Yeah, that's good. Let's work on those. So which one are there? Everybody said, okay, suggestion number one, honesty. That's a good value, right? Mm -hmm. To be honest, sure. Then I asked them, so what does it mean? And, and specifically, how do you act when you act in an honest way? What's your action points? And they realized that's hard. You should lie not to make people feel sad or bad, or you don't want to, you know, to, to, to insult anyone, so you lie a little bit. I said, well, that's not honesty. No, it isn't. So they scrap honesty. They wipe it out. You can't define what it is, what it means. It's, it's worth discussing, of course. But what is it? And can we use it? You just said yourself, we have to lie a little bit. But who knows where to draw the line? Who knows how to balance a little bit of lying, white lies? Is that okay? Well, maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows what's a white lion, what's a gray lion, what's a dirty lion, what's fundamentally really, really bad. Who knows? Yeah, it's the intention. So if we have a good intention, I think it's okay to lie. The mother lies to, to, to her son, to her baby. She reads them stories and tell them, like, if you don't eat, uh, maybe the cat will eat your food or something like that. That's a lie. <laughs> you can be anything you like. You know, that's, that's the worst lie ever. You can be anything. That's never true, unfortunately. You can be a lot more than you think, but you can't be anything. I wanted to be a, a basketball player. Couldn't be, too short. Then I wanted to be a Formula One car driver. Too tall. Didn't fit into the cabin. <laughs> Life has treated me very unfairly. I had to find a profession where my height didn't matter, so I started writing books. <laughs> do you true, true story. And uh, do you think uh, writing books or expressing uh, all these topics, it, it comes from a place where it's you feel like you I don't want to say dark place, but it's just like maybe hurtful in a way that you like to uh, pass the experience to people. So uh, I, I want to educate people. I do a lot of research. I don't do any scientific studies. I don't do experiments, but I do research on every specific topic. And I reach out to all the authors of the books that I read, and some of them answer, some don't. I, I, I go see psychologists, psychiatrists, and, and behaviorists, and all of that. I want to teach people. I want to sum it up in a way that makes it tasteful, so people will read my books, so they will come to my lectures, and, and, and get these aha moments, and hopefully, hopefully aha moments, sometimes oh no moments. Mm -hmm. uh, people have, uh, have gotten married by reading Surrounded by Idiots. People have gotten divorced by <laughs> coming to a lecture because now I understand we will never solve this issue. Uh, is it good? Well, I like to have an effect on people. I like to make an impact. I like to move people, if you know what I mean, uh, uh, you know, mentally speaking. That's what I do, why I do this. It's a complicated way. It's, it, it's much easier to, to survive without being an author because that's, that's, that's quite hard, actually. It's so much work and you never know. Let's go throwing things into a black hole. Two years later, you know it, if people liked it or not. So it's, it's, it's not a good profession if you, you want to have fast results. But I do it because I think I'm contributing in hopefully a good way. And, and I, I really want people to talk about these things. And the beauty of it is when I'm traveling the world, as I do now these days, I could go to come here to, to Dubai, where we are today. I could go to Singapore, New Zealand, Canada, Norway, Poland, Great Britain. 
the people say the same things. Oh, that's the way it is. Yes. Oh, I know. I have a green wife or I have a yellow son or things like that. Mm -hmm. And I realize people are actually the same all over the globe. And to sound really stupid, I wasn't sure about that until I started to, to move around a little bit. I know it's sort of a basic understanding of human behavioral traits. I understand that. But at, at, that the similarities were so so strong everywhere because yellow is yellow everywhere and green is green everywhere. The culture differs, obviously. The culture here is different than from the culture home in, 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 in snowy Sweden. I understand that. But when we sit down, you and I, and we talk, and I can see the yellow in you and I can show you the red in me or my red tie <laughs> or whatever it is, uh, we can have a conversation, we can have a nice chat about it and we understand each other because now we have some sort of a framework to sort of look at and, and behave ourselves around. And that is the beauty of it. People are much, much more alike than we are different. It sounds like a cliche, I understand it, but it's so valuable and so important to, to not forget about it. If you're in the Middle East or if you're in Southeast Asia or if you are in, in Europe, sit down and have a conversation. Look people in the eye and you will understand who this guy is. It's, it's fantastic, but you have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah, that's, that's why I do this to connect, to I, make people think. I can see that. I can see how much you love it, also, and how much the this bring you joy, giving uh, to people and uh, um, giving something that they can relate to and and mm. give you back. It's it's a it's a pleasure. And uh, I honestly, I experienced this in my podcast. Uh, how I noticed that, you know, when you relate to people and tell them something that is good for them mm. through your story through through uh, meeting amazing minds like you and and that i'm passing something to them which i didn't know and uh, uh, that it's a it's so much pleasure to mm. to give it's something mm. that we learned uh, at uh, maybe later stages in our life exactly true so true oh you phrase it so beautifully to give is the beauty right but people say but i want i, I want to receive and you, you, sometimes you need to reach a certain age when you understand. First you give, then you get something back. If everybody just reminds themselves about it, first you give, then, then you will get something back. But not always, no, it's just life. It's unfair, I know, move along. You give and you give and you give, and then you will get something back. It's, it's just the way how it works. It's true. It's so simple. Yes. It's, it sounds almost silly I, when I say it. I, it we, we only understand it by time, and it, it doesn't. I come. think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, are you enjoying Dubai? Oh, absolutely! Oh, this is such a fascinating place. I've been here before uh, a couple of times. It's 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 absolutely fascinating. Everybody's so friendly and, and helpful and and kind. It's I, I actually I love it here. Food? How how's you? Which oh, food do I you like? Oh, I, I, I love I uh, this. I, I love. Uh, I don't. I don't know what's specifically Dubai ish or UAE food. I don't know. I love uh, the mess that you have here. The mess in general. Mm -hmm. uh, Mediterranean, I would say. Okay, yeah. well, let's go with that. Uh, I like that. It's very different from the Swedish meatballs. <laughs> okay, but they had those on the buffet. I saw meatballs. meatballs. I said, Are they Swedish? And he said. Yes, <laughs> trying to figure out, was that the right answer? <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> yeah, you should no, try like the it. Lebanese food also. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah. Sorry if I offended <laughs> anyone, but that is my main. <laughs> not me, of course. <laughs> of course not. That's ooh, I could sit for hours and, 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 oh, it's so good. It's so good. Continue this sentence. Uh, what is the essential for a good read? That is to make it a habit. If your book had a flavor, what it would taste like? It would taste like tutti frutti, meaning many different tastes. Like a cocktail. It's like a cocktail. If you uh, want to describe your writing process in three emojis, what would they be? I can't do that. I'm sorry, I'm a dinosaur. It's probably some sort of smiley, but I don't know. If your book were a movie, who would play the main character? I would. Not zombie. What? Zombie. Zombie. Because you have psychopath and you... Not zombie. No? No, no. No, I would. I you think. would play the main character. Yeah, I would be so the smart guy solving everything. You, you, will be, you will be having all these characters. 
bad boss set back maybe I, I, we have to use ai now then i guess some sort of a robot no Ooh, good questions bad answers i don't know this it's is not an amazing a, answer. It, it's 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 not I think you uh, fiction are, you know you so. are all these characters because you have to adopt these characters in order to write them in order to understand psychopathy i had to dig really really deep and that was actually scary yes scary. seriously scary because mm -hmm. I realized how easy it is to go from normality into something that I can actually use. When I understood manipulation techniques, I realized, oh, some people are using it against me and I could easily learn how to do this. And to keep away from it, you need to really pay attention to yourself. That's important because I think we have it in us in one way or another, you know. It's, it's not a virtue to never do any harm. The virtue is to be able to do harm, but mm -hmm. don't do it. That's the virtue. It's like the actor who goes into the uh, character so much, he mm. might hurt himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Thomas, it was a pleasure meeting you. And Thank you. Such a great mind, and I'm gonna read all your books. Uh, I read this one so far, and it will be an honor if you can sign it for me. So of much. course. How do you spell your name? Here you go, have it big. Oh, uh, this is your first name? Yeah. I will now call you my friend because I like doing that. That's a pleasure. To my friend. But this is the psychopath book. What does, <laughs> what does it actually say here? Uh, it's a sick or a psychopath. Yeah. Psychopath, yeah. yeah. Thank you for the invitation, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs>